Hello and welcome to this demo of Recover Point for Virtual Machines 5.0. What we're going to see here is a demo around the new version of Recover Point for Virtual Machine 5.0 to be specific, running on a EMC Extreme IO. Let's start with examining the environment. Here we can see the source X brick where we installed the Recover Point for Virtual Machines source RPAs. You can see that I have the volume where I install the VRPAs themselves, the repository small volume, the protected data store, and the journal that I'm going to use. We're going to see exactly the same thing at the target site as well. So we can examine exactly the same data stores that I created. If you go to vCenter, we can see that I have a designated cluster called source-rp4vms, which has two ES6 servers where I install the VRPAs and there are three VMs that I'm going to protect on these clusters all reside on the same data store called source VRPAs minus VMFS 0 and if we open the DR site we can see it have a designated cluster called recovery minus RP4 VMs with two ES6 servers where I install the VRPAs you do not necessarily need to install the VRPAs on the ES6 servers that you want to protect however for the sake of the demo that's exactly what I did now let's open the vCenter web UI. Managing recovery points for virtual machines is done from the vCenter web interface, knowing that the classic interface is going to be phased out. So the first thing we can see is the overview screen itself. So far, I'm not protecting any VMs, and therefore there is not too much to see here. However, you could see the new UI for recovery point 5.0. On the administration screen, we can see the source VM that I'm uh, protecting. We can see which vCenter is actually pointing to that uh, source VM cluster and what uh, ES6 clusters I'm going to protect. Again, uh, in real life scenarios, you do not necessarily need to uh, protect and install the VRPAs on the same ES6 clusters that you are protecting. Just for the sake of this demo, that's uh, what I'm actually doing running the VRPAs on the same ES6 server that I'm protecting. If that will not be the case, what will happen is that uh, RP4 VMs will just push the splitter to the ES6 server that you want to protect without actually installing the VRPA appliance. So let's go ahead and start protecting some VMs, should we? Let's go to the VMs and templates. I've already created a folder called uh, Protected VMs VRPAs. Protection is very easy. You just right-click the VM that you want to protect, point to All Recover Point for Virtual Machines Actions, and Protect. The first question is going to ask me, since it's the first time that I'm actually going to protect VM, is do you want to create a new consistency group already to an existing one? Since this is the first VM, I'm just going to create a new CG, give it a name, select the source of VMs that I want to be responsible for the protection of these VMs at the source site, Press the next button. Let's give a production name a copy, copy name. Here I'm going to select the data store that I'm actually going to use for the journal. This is actually not the data store that I want to select for the journal. So let's select one. So that's the data store that I want to designate for the journal. Journal is really like TiVo. It basically stores all the changes that the VM is taking place with while I'm protecting the VMs itself. So I can go back to any point in time that is specified based on the RPO and the RTO that I'm going to set in a second. This is where it's actually going to save those changes to. So this is the journal volume. Okay, and I can also set the size for the journal itself Pretty much I'm um, going to use the default here because there are not going to be too many changes for the VMs, but you can of course specify whatever size that you want based on your specific sizing requirements. On the advanced option, I can see uh, if the VM, for example, has multiple VMDK file, I can select which one to replicate. I can also select the type of protection in terms of this provisioning. I can select to replicate to a thick provisioning where let's for example say that the source VM is on thin provisioning all of those things can be done from here I'm just going to leave the default and press the next button select the target VRPAs at the DR site and give it a name again pretty much the same questions I'm going to be asked here 
what the journal volume I'm going to use at the DR side. So that's the journal. And here come the interesting part. I can actually specify what's going to be the RPO, whether I'm going to set RPO based on time or capacity. So let's just do time. Let's select five minutes RPO. What's interesting is that the cover point for virtual machines support both async application and sync application and all on the same data store. And we're going to come back to it. So for now, let's just remember that I'm protecting the first VM with an async application on a five minutes RPO interval. Let's press the next button. I'm going to ask it to basically create me a new shadow VM that it's going to use to replicate the changes to. Let's press the next button select the data store where it's actually going to replicate the VMs to. This is different from the journal where it's just storing the, the changes of the RPO as opposed to where should it boot the VMs at the recovery site once I'm declaring failover. So that's going to be the data store designated for that operation. I'm going to press next button and I'm asking it to start with the replication itself. I can do last minute changes if I want to. However, I'm happy with my uh, decision. I'm just going to press the finish button. Once we finish with setting up the replication, the protection, we can start seeing the progress of the replicated VM. The duration of the replication will be dependent on all the size of the VM that you want to replicate and also the bandwidth between the source array to the target array and also the network settings because we are using replication over the network in our case. Here you can see the extreme array, the target array that is actually receiving the replicated VM. You can see the bandwidth being used. You can also set it via IOPS and we can also see the IOPS divided into block size if that's what we wish to do. Let's wait for the replication to finish and then uh, resume the recording. Some additional things that I can view while replicating is the CG consistency group setting itself. Apart from setting uh, the group policy and changing it, I can also see the RPO lag and things of that nature that may be important for me while I'm monitoring the real environment. Some other important settings are the boot up priority. I can set it up via the consistency group and then within the VMs themselves, I can set up the priority for the consistency group itself and this way I can make it very similar to Site Recovery Manager in the way that I can select which consistency group should boot up prior to the other CG that will be boot up. Lastly, we can check the journal at the remote site and let's view the snapshots that are already uh, appropriate for me to choose from if I want to run a failover from. So here we can see a list of all the snapshots that are already there. And I can of course modify the link policy and change the behavior of consistency group even though it's already done and finished replicating. I can enable things like deduplication and enable higher level of uh, compression and so on and so forth and also set the replication to be done for example sync and then switch to async if the bandwidth or the latency are very high. Now that we're done replicating one VM which we can view from the UI here let's add another VM to the same CG. Because I've already created the consistency group I don't need to recreate it and it's very easy for me to just add and protect another VM if I want to add it to the same CG. So I just add it to an existing consistency group Let's select it. Next, select the same copy, the same resources. Select the data store where we want to replicate the VM to. Again, this is not the journal data store, this is the actual VMFS data store. And that's it, we're ready to complete. And now this VM will start replicating again. We can see here the existing VM that I've already replicated and this is the new VM that will in a second switch to the real name of the VM that I'm actually replicating. Now that we have the second VM replicated in the same consistency group as the first one, let's view something interesting. These two VMs reside on the same data store. So the RPO is based on the data stores that these two VMs reside on, right? That's what we would like to think. But in fact, that is not the case. The beauty of Recover Point for Virtual Machines is the ability to replicate at the VM level. So even though we have multiple VMs residing at the same data store, like we see here, we have PVM 01, 02, and 03, what we can actually do 
is designate different RPO per VM. So, so far I put PVM01 and 02 into the same CG and the same RPO. Let's do something different now. Let's take PVM03, which again is on the same data store, and create it a completely new protection scheme. In our case, let's simulate that this VM is actually a very important VM for our business that requires sync-based replication as opposed to async that the other two VMs are a member of. Let's again select the journal for that VM. And here comes the fun part. Let's assume that I want to designate sync-based application, so that's exactly what I'm doing here, selecting sync. The rest of the settings are the same. It's going to create me a new VM in the recovery site. Let's select the VMFS data store to host this copy. And let's start with the replication. Once the replication is done, we can finally see that the VM is actually replicated in a sync fashion as opposed to the other two VMs that are replicated in an async fashion. Now again, let me just reiterate that these are three VMs residing in the same data store and because we are doing replication at the splitter level, at the ES6 level, we can actually designate different RPOs for different VMs. That's the beauty of software-defined replication. If I want to, I can go to the CG settings and actually view the snapshots. Because we were using sync-based replication, we can see that pretty much every point in time, every second is being replicated to the remote site. And the number of snapshots will depend on the number of snapshots that are allowed to pay the RPO and pay per the policy itself. Now let's go ahead and perform some failover activities.